Just a reminder, check out my EV Swap store, evswapconversions.com. I just got another batch of coffee in. This time I've got whole bean as well as ground. This is amazing coffee, small batch roasted here in Colorado. Check out the website. Hello and welcome back to EV Swap. I've got the FJ40 up on the lift and we're about to start the EV Resto Mod conversion for real. You remember we already got the Tesla motor mounted in the middle. This is a Tesla Model 3 motor. It's out of a 2023 Tesla Model 3 and the car had less than a thousand miles on it before it was totaled. So this is a great candidate for my vehicle. This motor will make uh, approximately 300 horsepower and 300 foot pounds of torque, which will move this truck along really well. If you remember, my other Land Cruiser is heavier and it only has about 100 horsepower. So this thing is gonna be a sports car compared to the other one. My other plans for this build is to have at least 200 miles of range. I'm going big this time. I think 200 miles is kind of the sweet spot where you balance cost with usability. Uh, 200 miles means that I could drive from here down to Colorado Springs and back and not have to charge. I could drive up into the mountains and back without having to charge. And then of course, when you can charge, that just expands your radius even further. So I'm really excited about this build. I think it's gonna be a really practical, really usable, really fun, fast, capable off-road, and just so cool to have an old FJ40 like this electrified uh, with modern technology like that. So let's dive into it. So this is a 1969 Toyota Land Cruiser. FJ40 is what they're called. The Toyota Land Cruiser is based off the old military Jeep from World War II. They were building them in Toyota's factory. After World War II, they were licensed and then um, Toyota started to build their own version. So this is kind of an evolution of a military Jeep from World War II. Another cool thing about the FJ40s is the engines that they used in these are based off of the old Chevy inline sixes, also left over from World War II when the US forces withdrew from Japan and the country was starting to get itself back under its own governance. The US military left thousands of engines, thousands of parts uh, that they had brought over for the war effort, but they didn't think it was worth it to bring them back. And so Japan utilized all of those engines and those components and they started evolving them, which is really cool because the Toyota Land Cruiser, people don't know, is it's similar in a lot of ways to a Chevy or a Ford or a Dodge because that's how Japan started was with the American trucks. But then of course, we know that J Japanese manufacturing started to really accelerate in the 60s and 70s. And they started getting very, very good at high precision work, really quality craftsmanship. And that's how we know and love all the Japanese cars on the roads today. So this is a really cool heritage of both American and Japanese ingenuity together. And I'm so stoked to have this here. So I just feel privileged to have a piece of history like this that I can work on. Another part of this truck is it's a 1969, which means it's emissions exempt. And it's also uh, one of the earlier ones. So the steel is a little bit thicker and a little bit higher quality than some of the later FJ40s. Also, since it's a 1969, it's exempt from the emissions testing regulations that came out in 1974, which means I can pretty much do anything with this. Now, it doesn't always have to remain electric. Maybe in 10 or 20 years, the value on these would go up so much that I would put a gas engine back in it uh, you know, in the future when all cars are EV, maybe it would be cool to have a gas car. So one of my goals with this project is to not cut any of the body, not cut any of the chassis and have everything that I do for the EV conversion on this vehicle completely removable so that this vehicle could be returned 100% to Toyota stock or put in a Chevy V8 <laughs> or do anything really in the future because I'm not gonna cut this body and I'm not gonna cut the frame and everything that I do is gonna be reversible. So I'm really excited to do that because I wanna offer conversion kits for the FJ40. So I need to make it to appeal to everybody. So I bought this FJ40 kinda how it sits right now. Uh, it had no axles, no engine, no transmission, um, nothing like that. It was just a frame and the body and I've got all these Rubbermaid boxes are full of parts that I got with it. The owner of this car that I bought it from about 10 years ago, he took it all apart and he was gonna do a full restoration 
and then he had a kid. <laughs> and basically it was put on the back burner, it was sidelined, and it just collected dust in his garage ever since. But you can see the paint has been mostly stripped off, it's been sanded, the frame has been cleaned up. I actually covered the frame in pour 15, and you can see it's kind of flaking off. I'm not really happy with how that turned out, so I'm actually gonna powder coat the frame um, before the truck's finished. But it was kind of perfect because I had no engine or anything already, and it was already stripped out, taken down. So I was able to pick up this truck for very cheap with a title here in Colorado. So uh, it's just great to have an FJ40 project on the lift here at EV Swap. Interior a little bit, but I'll show it off a little bit more. This is kind of the most rust in the whole body is this section here. But I'm gonna go ahead and sand all this rust out and we'll treat it. Otherwise, normally you have holes in these panels but they are just solid and even in these corners where water collects it's mostly just surface rust so i did have my friend steve with precise techworks down in durango colorado he welded in these replacement panels so these weren't too rusty but he said that he saw a little bit of rust starting in the corners so we just replaced them with all new sheet metal and uh stopped that rust cold then on the back these were extremely rusty, which is very common on FJ40s, and this tailgate panel was also rusty. So again, I had Steve replace these panels, and he did an excellent job. I could not have done a good a job as that. So this truck is now 99.9% .9 rust-free, and uh, one of the cleanest FJ40s I've ever seen, actually. So. I think this truck only has 57,000 original miles. It's a Colorado truck its whole life. It was living in Montrose, Colorado, which is a very arid, dry climate for most of the year. So it's just an excellent time capsule of a truck. We talked a little bit about how it sits now. Let's talk about what's coming up. These are some of the parts I've been collecting for the FJ40 build because I want this to be not just an EV conversion, but a resto mod, something that drives and handles like a modern car as well. So we can see I've got the Willwood disc brake conversion. This is awesome. The, the ventilated rotors with Willwood calipers and braided brake lines front and rear. It's just gonna be so nice to have four wheel disc brakes on this truck because originally it has four wheel drum brakes which you got 300 horsepower in this puppy they're not gonna last to 300 horsepower so even with the regen and everything else we need good brakes so we got wheelwood disc brakes on all four corners also you can see i've got this nice quaif limited slip differential so this is a torsen type limited slip or a helical and you can see inside well maybe you can't see but inside there are helical gears in and when both wheels are running together, those helical gears are just happy. They're actually stationary. But then as one tire starts to spin faster than the other tire, the helical gears start to transmit some of the excess load from the spinning wheel to the one that's not spinning as much, even if it has less traction. And that's the benefit of having a limited slip. So this is gonna go inside the Tesla drive unit because the Tesla drive unit has an open differential. So that means that if I'm off-roading this truck and I get one wheel in the air, all of the power of the motor will unload through that one wheel in the air because all the differentials are unlocked and they're just gonna open and let things spin. So putting the torsen in the middle is gonna turn this from kind of a very rudimentary all-wheel drive to a very sophisticated all-wheel drive with the torque sensing, with the torsen differential or torque sensing differential. So that will make sure that the front and rear axles get equal power, especially off-roading or in ice and snow, low traction situations like that. So this will basically have the same all-wheel drive system as a really high-tech Audi or Subaru or something like that. So additionally, we need some different reduction gears to put inside that Tesla drive unit. So we have these gears from Felton in the UK. And what these do is I will take apart the Tesla drive unit in the truck and I will insert these gears, which will change the final drive ratio from about nine to one to about 3.5 to one, I think. 
And the reason for that is because we have additional gearing in the differentials themselves and the axles. So if we have the stock Tesla drive unit in here, it's meant to spin at the road speed of the car. So the direct output of that is supposed to go into a wheel. But since I'm putting it in the middle of the vehicle and I'm gonna run drive shafts front and rear, it's gonna send that power through the differential in the axles. On the FJ40 Land Cruiser, they're 411 gears, 4.11 to one reduction, which means it's gonna multiply that nine to one by another 4.1 to one. And basically what that means is it's gonna be extremely low geared. It will only go 40 or 50 miles per hour at the absolute maximum. By putting in the 3.5 to one, that means that we're multiplying the 3.5 by the 4.1, which is gonna get us a much closer to a, about a 12 or 13 to one, which is gonna be uh, a little bit less reduction than the Tesla Model S, which is good because we're gonna be heavier with bigger tires and stuff, so we need more torque at the wheels. So we'll have a little bit of a lower gearing than that, but this, it'll still let us to reach probably 100 miles an hour or higher top speed in this truck, uh, which is great. I mean, you're not gonna need that speed, but that means that if you're on the highway, 75 miles an hour, uh, you still have a few more RPM at the top and you're not, and you're able to cruise on the highway with traffic. You're not going 40 or 50 miles an hour. So that's gonna be excellent upgrade for the Tesla drive unit. Also, you can see we've got the old man Emo steering stabilizer. I'll do tie rods and tie rod ends to go on the truck. Also, I've got chromoly steel axles to go in the front axle because putting this much torque and power through the stock axles is definitely going to break them on the rear axle they're stronger because the wheels don't turn but on the front axle uh, they can break much more easily because the wheels turn and because the front wheels are going up the obstacle first so these are basically as strong as you can get i've got new drive flanges for it uh, all new parts these are the burfield joints so all chromoly ready to go in the truck and be bulletproof. Of course, we got some cool LED tail lights to go on. I'm gonna have all LED lights on the truck and we have new polyurethane bushings to mount the body to the frame. Also, we've got the full axle rebuild kit with all the wheel bearings and gaskets that we're gonna need. So I'm really psyched to get started on this. The first project is gonna be rebuild the axles. So we'll take all of the axles apart, we'll clean them all. There's probably 30 year old, 40 year old junk in the axles, so we'll clean them all out. We'll get the differentials out and we'll inspect them, make sure they're not damaged. We'll make sure that they're, the preload is set correctly and we'll get all back together with new seals and bearings. And of course, the disc brake upgrade. Once I get the, that done, then we'll move on towards some of the electrification. We're gonna get drive shafts made up for the drive unit and we're gonna start figuring out where components are gonna go. I've got fenders, brand new fenders from Toyota and the rest of the body panels here. So what I need to do is assemble the front end of this truck because this is where the battery is gonna go, but look how much space we have for a battery. Massive amount of space to put the battery. So that's where we're gonna put the battery under the hood. So I need to put the fenders on the grill and the hood so I can measure and see how much space I actually have for a battery and I can start CAD for the battery box. And then I gotta pick, figure out what battery I wanna use. Am I gonna use used modules out of like a Tesla? Am I gonna buy brand new batteries? I'm really not sure on this truck. Not only do I want 200 miles of range, but I want it to be very safe. So I'm even considering lithium iron batteries. Uh, that would be very expensive because I'd have to buy them new. Also, I'm considering Hyundai batteries. I had some experience with the Hyundai modules out of an Ionic 5 with my Electrek build. And I was really impressed with the, the size of the batteries for the capacity. And they were just a good form factor. There was good mounting locations and good bus bar adaption. So the Hyundai batteries are on my list as well. But again, we need at least 200 miles of range, which means I think we're gonna need at minimum 70 kilowatt hours, but probably closer to 100 kilowatt hours to really get 200 miles of range. But luckily we have all this space to fit as much battery as we need. And you can see I've got the motor mounts here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the battery box to these original motor mounts. And then that way the battery box will be able to fit into any FJ40 going forward. Then lastly, we're gonna have to do the interior on this truck. Uh, these trucks are pretty bare bone. You can see the whole body is basically painted the same color as the exterior. So I'm gonna do that, uh, repaint the whole truck, do the dashboard, 
We're gonna add a heater and air conditioning to this build. My other builds haven't had that, but this one's gonna have that. And this build is also gonna have some custom bucket seats, I think, instead of a bench seat like stock. So it's gonna have a couple little upgrades inside, but we're gonna keep the feel and the character of the classic FJ40 as much as possible. So thanks again for watching another episode. This is kind of an overview of the FJ40, but we're gonna get started on it and we'll see you when it's running. Mmm, coffee.